Today on What It's Like, 1953 Buick Skylark Convertible, the most expensive Buick up until this point. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. Picture this, you just acquired a car you know nothing about, or perhaps you own these cars back in the past, and you're just here to reminisce. Either way, we cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars off the beaten path. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. If you're in the market for an absolutely stunning 1953 limited production Skylark convertible to add to your collection, this one is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall. If 53 Buick isn't your thing, they have over 870 cars for sale when recording this episode. Click the link below after the show. Let's talk 1953 Buick. Buick model lineup special was in the basement followed by Super. Let's take a minute and just check out these wagons which are absolutely gorgeous. Followed by the Roadmaster and the Skylark sat at the top for 1953. Buick launched the Skylark in 1953 and it was created to commemorate Buick's 50th anniversary. And it's worth mentioning the 53 Skylark was in convertible form only and was limited production. GM also offered low volume Cadillac Eldorado convertible as well as an Oldsmobile Fiesta convertible, which the Skylark outsold both of those combined. Just to clarify, in 53, the Skylark was technically part of the Roadmaster line for a super special convertible offering. Buick would offer the Skylark in 53 and 54, and then it would take a bit of a hiatus, and something similar was done in 61 through 63, but Buick wouldn't offer the Skylark as its own model until 1964, and offered it from 64 to 1998 in eight generations. The Buick Skylark was styled by none other than Duke, 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 Harley Earl, built on the GM C-body platform along such cars as the Oldsmobile 98 and Cadillac Series 60 Special. This car was expensive, and the question in the back of my mind is what did this car have that the Roadmaster didn't have because the Roadmaster was also offered in a convertible. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Roadmaster convertible and what it cost. It actually cost $4,315, which is equivalent to you spending $47,965.51 in the year 2023, and the Skylark, which cost $5,000, which is equivalent to $55,579.96. So with the Buick Roadmaster, what came standard? These are all of the major features. I didn't write every single thing down. 12-volt electric system, which blew my mind because I didn't think that Buick went 12 volt in 1953. I thought that came a little bit later. Backup lights, Dynaflow, automatic transmission, turn signals, glare proof mirror, windshield washer, power steering, safety group, foam tech seat cushions. Now the Skylark, what came standard with it was just about everything. 12 volt electric system, backup lights, turn signal, custom interior trim, easy eye glass, Dynaflow transmission, foam tech seat cushions, heater and defrost, power antenna, power brakes, power steering, power windows, safety group, wire wheels, the Kaisley Haynes kind, white wall tires, selectronic radio. So there you could see that yes, you got a lot more features, but it came at a price. While on the topic of numbers, let's talk specs. 207.6 inches long, 79.9 inches wide, 58.9 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 121 and a half inches. It weighs 4,395 pounds. Price $5,000, which is equivalent to you spending $55,579.96 in the year 2023. Total 1953 Buick production was 488,814 units. Total 1953 Skylark was 1,690 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer. 322 cubic inch displacement nailhead V8. It's good for 188 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, 300 pound-feet of torque at 2,400 RPM with a compression rating of eight and a half to one. When mated to the only transmission on offer, two-speed automatic Dynaflow, zero to 60 could be had in 13.4 seconds, getting an average fuel economy of 11.7 miles to the gallon. So let's talk styling, starting with the front. Just look at how everything is all designed. It's got a nice checker pattern here in the headlight assembly. 
with running all below it. Nice waterfall grill. I love how these protrude out. Bumperettes. Roadmaster right there. And notice it has a slit here in the bottom to allow more air. Also, the bumper's not straight on, it's textured. It protrudes more up here than it does down here. This car is so beautifully sculptured. I hope all the lines come up on the video because it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous, this car is. Right here, there isn't a line at all, but this little tiny line gets bigger and bigger as it comes down towards the nose and then wraps back down around. Take a gander at this hood ornament. It's like V8 with a line coming through it. Notice stamped in the chrome, it says Buick. The side profile of this car is my favorite. Look at how it's all sculpted. It's almost two tiers. Also have to talk about this bright work. Stainless piece starting here and coming down. Notice it gets wider as it comes down. It comes down here. It doesn't go all the way down. It stops right about there. And it's still getting bigger. And then it gets smaller all of a sudden and goes out the back. But this has got the dip. Just look at how all this is designed. In this rear end section. Let's talk about this door panel. It's got nice bright work up here. Chrome and or stainless. Window crank for the vent window. It operates like that. This car has electric windows and they are labeled. Door handle to get out. Notice this piece here. And notice how it curves in to meet the dashboard, which is also somewhat protruded. I love the two-tone of this interior. And if you know me, teal is my favorite color. Teal and white is probably the best two-tone combination ever created, in my opinion. I love how the stainless separates the colors. This is the armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut. Coming down inside the pedal box itself, high beam dimmer switch. This is the emergency parking brake, power brakes, gas pedal. I think this is for the windshield wash feature, but I'm not 100% certain on that. But it's got power antenna, which is right there. This is for the wipers. But if you were to discharge the wash feature, I don't know if that does that. In the comment section below, if you know. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. Here's what under the steering wheel looks like. And it is in my crotch, but the steering wheel moves freely. I wear size 34 pants and that is exactly why I show this because if you are the same size as me, it's going to be a little bit snug. On to the button switches and knobs, starting at the bottom of the dashboard. That silver knob, that opens the hood. That is the hood release. Right next to it is the brake release, brake warning light to let you know whether the parking brake is engaged. Three gauge pods sit directly in front of the driver. The one on the left houses two gauges at the top amp meter. Left turn signal indicator, water temperature, speedometer in the center, odometer with tripometer inside of it. Drive modes read park, neutral, drive, low, reverse. Gas gauge with oil pressure at the bottom, right turn signal indicator as well. Heat, lights, driver's side air vent, passenger side air vent, lighter, defrost. At the bottom, there is a heat slash heater control and clock. Up above, sun visors and they're 
pretty big. Over here, sun visor as well. This one's got a daytime, nighttime mirror, and that's what it looks like. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. Look at that. And it fits inside there, no problem whatsoever. So really cool feature when getting in the back. When you push the seat forward, the whole seat slides forward. Do you see that? I'm gonna move the seat back. Did you see it move? That is extremely cool. So that is how much space you have to get back there. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of tight getting back in there even with the seat folding. But I got adequate knee room rope here as well as over here to put a lap blanket on there blanket keep warm here's what the back to front view looks like here's what the greenhouse looks like here's what the rear visibility looks like from the back there's quite a lot of space when the convertible top is up there's a nice dome light on the convertible top itself i look like in the rear tons of headroom and if i didn't have tons of headroom I could take the top off it's a convertible it's quite interesting it's very upright and the seat back is very dipped down but uh power window ashtray armrest same thing over here so just check out this engine compartment it's absolutely gorgeous it's almost like it's brand new windshield washer bottle there This looks like power steering going down inside the power steering rack right there, which is in a really weird spot sitting on top of the power steering column itself. Look at how slender this battery is. If you know what this doohickey is in the comment section below, it's like it's almost like a breather to the oil bath air cleaner. Generator. Check out the ventilation pipe. I must take it from the fender. Both fenders have it. This one just has ventilation. That one goes back into the heater box. On to the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars. Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, limited production, ultra clean, distinctive styling, performance, luxury, built in Buick's golden anniversary year, milestone car status, against it, expensive, even in today's dollars. Some Skylark only parts scarce wire wheels can cost up to $2,500 a set and this book was written in 2000 so I'm pretty sure that it'd probably be up to 5,000 or maybe even 7,500 a set all right now it's time for name that tune first person to give me both the correct name of the band as well as song title first person to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. So if I catch you on here or on Facebook, just know that I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, hold on a second. Here's some previews for our next episode. 1952 Ford Custom Line Club Coupe. That's what's coming up next on What It's Like. And until that time, toodaloo!